All right, folks, uh, thank you for joining me uh, from the Rare Candy YouTube channel. Uh, just Glenn Rockney tonight. Um, just wanted to do a quick vi uh, video. I've always wanted to do something on this. Uh, this is, and I'm sorry if you came thinking this was something to do with politics uh, or, you know, COVID and stuff, whatever you normally listen to us for. Um, if, you, if you came for Raider news, this isn't really Raider news, though it's slightly Raider related. Um, but I'm here to talk about my favorite quarterback season of all time, single season. Um, not the best, right? We, you know, the best isn't really that debatable, right? The best, uh, you know, you could go Peyton Manning with the Broncos, Peyton Manning with the Colts, uh, Drew Brees, 2009, uh, Tom Brady, 07. I mean, it's, it's, there's a debate within those, but uh, most people at least can narrow down the, the top five. Um, now, the favorite, I think that I might be the only person with this as my favorite because I simply was not around when it happened you can see the guy behind me right uh subscribe to the channel on youtube right this is gonna be youtube only no audio of this just youtube but uh the guy behind me right it's an old guy right this is george blanda right before i get to george blanda though i want to talk about why i really got interested in looking at this season james winston that's why james winston uh for me like i i've always said this i know guys that pardon my tape uh, barstool big cats big on him too if you if you are like, I don't, I just want to watch a football game, right? Where I have no vested interest in it. I'm not gambling on it. None of my two teams are playing. I got no fantasy football guys going, but I'm going to sit down and watch a football game and I want to be entertained, right? Who better than Jameis Winston, right? Jameis Winston could throw five touchdowns. You know what I'm saying? Light it up. He did it against the Rams in 2019 when he threw for 30 interceptions for the rest of the, uh, later that year. It was like, oh man. He had a huge game against the Rams. We were like, damn, that's that's Jameis Winston. That's why Jameis Winston still has a job. And, you know, that's why he, he's he's good, even though he hasn't won a lot in his career. But then Jameis Winston could also just like five, six turnover game, just completely shit the bed, but it's still entertaining. So I when I see this Jameis Winston, I said, Jameis Winston threw 30 uh, picks this year, right? I want to look at. Or, I'm sorry, I think this is 2019, right, when I'm thinking about this. I want to look at, like, who has more. In my head, I'm thinking Brett Favre, maybe like a Jeff George season. Um, guys that were just straight-up gunslinger, like a test of Verde, guys on bad teams that were throwing all the time. Uh, no, no, it was not. George Blanda, 42 interceptions in 1962, and that's what I'm here to talk about. Before I get into the 1962 season, let's talk about George Blanda, right? You're, if you're not a football person, um, if you're not a uh, historian of the league, if you only care about contemporary football, um, George Blanda played for 26 years, uh, 1949 to 1975, uh, started out with the Bears, um, went to the Oilers, uh, finished with the Raiders, uh, my Raiders, uh, primarily as a kicker. But he was a kind of guy who could do everything, right? He could play quarterback he could kick field goals he even played a little bit of linebacker for the bears right so let's go to the history of george blanda here how did we get to 1962 what what goes into it right you know when, when uh, artists make their best album people want to know what happened before that album right what was alanis morissette talking about well, why why was she so mad on that album you know what i'm saying like then you find out chicago bears um so a couple things just uh, crazy when you you know like when you look at uh, inflation costs nowadays and how much stuff costs, then you look at what it was in like 1960 and you're, you're prepared for it to be low, but then you're like, wow, that's dirt cheap. So Blanda was signed by the Chicago bears in 1949. It was drafted in the 12th round. The NFL draft used to have a lot of rounds. That means you did not trust your scouts back then. That means you had, uh, you're like, I need like 30 chances to get like seven players. You know, that was, the league was not what it is today. Um, it's remarkable where, where it's gone from there. But, uh, okay, let's look at, uh, oh, here we go. George, George Blanda was signed for $600 in 1949. Then um, George Hallis demanded it back when he made the team. It was like a security deposit on George Blanda. He was like, hey, look, here's 600 to get you through this arduous long training camp. He's like, I need that back. Like, you know, I got bills. I got to keep the lights on at Soldier Field. George House, cheap ass, man. Blanda is given a, a lucrative contract of 6,000, right? 
after because he's, he's going to make the team, right? Coaches like him. He's going to make the team. He's still got to shave off that 600, right? $6,000 is a contract. I mean, like, look at what the guys make now. Like, league minimum is, like, almost a million dollars in the NFL. Like, it's just it's nuts. Like, that's just somebody who's never going to play. Now, so Blanda and House did not get along. George Blanda is tried out at linebacker, right? Um, he gets a little shot at quarterback, but it is until 1953 that George Blanda is playing quarterback for the Chicago Bears, right? Gets injured the next year, and he's not even the first string quarterback anymore. So for the longest time, Hallis and really the first eight years of Blanda's career is kind of wasted, right? He say Blanda says Hallis wouldn't even replace my cleats, my kick. He, he calls it a kicking shoe, which I think is like well, that sounds like it's made out of wood. Like my kicking shoe, yeah, I'm whittling a new one. Oh, I'm working on it, George. You know what I'm saying? Like, give me some time. Like, I swear. So Blanda's saying that the 50s, 1950s, uh, the game had evolved. Hallis was just stuck in the past, right? Reminds me of John Gruden right now. But uh, it got so bad that, that Blanda just retired. He's like, look, I'm a quarterback. I know I'm a quarterback. Hallis only wanted him as a kicker. Um, really had to scratch and claw to be a quarterback. But Blanda goes, you know what? I'm going to go to the AFL. I'm going to go to this startup league called the AFL. They're throwing the ball over there, right? They're throwing the ball a lot more. Now, when I say a lot more, if we scale that to now, that's still not even close to what we see nowadays. Um, but this George Blanda season, I'm going to get through. You're seeing the, you're going to start seeing the pass attempts that you see nowadays. So it's almost like a comically weird season that opened the door for some great seasons. If you want to look at it that way. Uh, so he goes to the Oilers, right? Goes to the Oilers, plays for Pop Ivy over there. What a name, Pop Ivy, right? Just guys used to have like noun, verb name. Like your name could be a noun or a verb or both back then. Um, it, was, it was, you know, like Bear Bryant, like just it's shit like that. Just, just crazy. Just everyone had names like that. So uh, does well. Play, wins AFL Player of the Year in 1961. Has his best year in the NFL or AFL that year. Um, <laughs> 3,300 passing yards that year. That's no joke. I mean, that's no joke back then. 36 TDs. Uh, he's killing it, right? And the Oilers are rising. They're just they're playing well. They're they're playing uh, they're playing well. Um, but he's turning the ball over a lot. George Bland is just lighting it on fire. He's Joker mode, burning the pile of money. Like he doesn't care. Like let's let's just just ball out. Okay. All right. So this leads us up to 1962. The Oilers are a they're the team that just can't get over the hump. All right. They're good, but there's other teams that are better but they're good enough to really try to go all in, right? Bland is the quarterback. That's our guy. We're kicker and quarterback. AFL was looking for attractions at that time to, to compete with the NFL. So who better than like a multi scorer, basically a guy who could score with his feet, score with his arm, right? So we are going to go to George Blanda, 1962. Now I must admit, I was almost halfway done with this show. This is my second recording of this. It's already going better. So uh, better, but if I'll show you right here, my screen. Now, how would you read this schedule? Right. You're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, like, um, you know, do whatever that you can dislike. If you don't like it, whatever. I don't care. I don't get offended. I won't cry at all. Despite what people say. Um, they go top to bottom there. Like, it looks like, like December 15th looks like week one and it's, and it's not, you know? So I read it the other way around. It kills a story if you do it that way, but it's a better story this way, actually. So here we go. Let's start week one, Sunday, September 9th at Buffalo. It's a good time to be at Buffalo, right? It's not, it's not snowing up there. You're, you're a Houston guy. You're not ready for the snow. Um, although George had some experience in the snow playing uh, for George Hallis out in uh, uh, Chicago. Right. But uh, you get a hard fought win. Um, you know, on, Hey, look, this 28 to 23, uh, Houston, the, the Oilers take down Buffalo. And you're thinking like, damn, Bland almost had a good game. 28 points, right? Probably had three or four touchdowns, something like that. If he's throwing the ball a lot, not quite right. This is, this is what I'm talking about. They, they slap you in the face early on this one. How crazy this season is. So George Blanda goes 15 for 30, 15 completions out of 30 attempts right down the middle halfway. Right? So anybody who doesn't know anything about completion percentage nowadays, guys are completing like 60%. Like some guys are all close to 70. You know what I mean? Like, especially the guys that do a lot of short passes, uh, Derek Carr, um, <laughs> much to people's chagrin, uh, throws a lot of short passes, but completing 50% of your passes now is like nothing. Right. So this isn't really that good of a game. Like, uh, even for back then 15 for 30, 
50% completion, doesn't even crack 200 yards, gets 188 yards, um, then one touchdown, and get this, six interceptions. Six in a win. In a win. Let's look at the game log. Let's. I, I always like to look at the score here. How? Why was he throwing interceptions so late in the game that they won, right? So we look. You look early. Houston takes takes a lead on the Charlie Toller run. Uh, then, it, you know, Buffalo gets a field goal. But the, the, at what point in the, in the second quarter, the uh, I'm sorry, the Oilers are up. Uh, they, they put Tennessee here. I don't know. They weren't Tennessee yet. I get that they're Tennessee now. Don't put that. Uh, they're up 21 to three in the second quarter. So wait, you, you just run it, killing the clock. Your defense is playing great. What is going on here? So Blanda throws a touchdown in the uh, – in the first quarter, so hold on, they have it. I think they have it wrong here. Oh no, no, no. Okay, so they they do a trick play in the third quarter. Billy Cannon throws a forty yard pass. I'm look. I looked at a lot of these game logs. Billy Cannon, hell of a player. Let's say that much. Billy Billy Cannon might be the best player on this team. So Charlie Hennigan gets a 30, forty yard pass from Billy Cannon. George Blanda kick. That's why I confused. George Blanda was the kicker. Kicks the extra point. So it's twenty eight to three. Right. This is Atlanta Falcons Super Bowl loss territory here. So right after that, Buffalo get, uh, kicks a 100-yard kickoff for a uh, return for a touchdown. Doesn't get the extra point. But like Blanda after that, they're passing. He throws all these interceptions. I mean, I don't know when these interceptions were thrown, but they had to have – some of them had to be in the second half when they're up 28-3. to three. George, are you trying to give the game away? That's one of those games. Your coach is not happy after this, man. Like he's not happy. But, you know, George, George is like, you know what? This is all part of the plan. This is all part of the plan. Like the Joker mode. We're going Joker mode mode so let's go to the next week right uh you get your win you know if you're an oilers fan right you're working at the texaco gas station you're like in 1962 you got chickens running all over the place you got the uh self-service pumps and then you or you got i'm sorry not self-service you go out and you pump the gas for the people um you're just playing with your overalls all day and stuff the big piece of hay coming out of the mouth um and you're you're kind of like, look, we, we got the win, but Jesus, George. Cheese and crackers, George. No, he's probably not saying Jesus. Cheese and crackers, George. Like, take care of the football, right? Then you go, so week two, right? They're at Boston, right? They haven't played a home game yet, so that's fine. You've stole one on the road, right? I, I guess, right? Stole one on the road. Uh, they lose to Boston, at Boston. Uh, again, you got... You're getting your road games early. It's a good schedule. You're getting your road games early on the East Coast, less chance of snow. Uh, they lose 31, 34 to 21, all right? And George lets it rip this game. This, he has averages 10 yards per, uh, I think, attempt here. I don't know if that's attempt or completion. They don't specify. But uh, 20 for 36, 55% completion percentage, respectable, respectable. Uh, three touchdowns and four picks. I mean, he, he – this to me, I'm not going to look up the game log just for time's sake here, but this seems like to me they were down early. They got down early. Defense wasn't playing super well, and George was probably just letting it fly, like just throwing anywhere, everywhere. Matthew Stafford, Calvin Johnson, just triple coverage, YOLO balls, like just, you know what, fuck it, like just throwing it blindfolded damn near. So, you know, George still, right, had a decent game. You know, he turned the ball over too much, but I, I do think those turn turnovers probably came in the second half of the game. I'm giving George the benefit of the doubt. All right. Okay. So one and one, one and one season's young, 14 game season, mind you, if you're not used to that uh, for the longest time, 14 game seasons uh, for the AFL and NFL uh, OJ Simpson, right? You guys may have known him as a uh, uh, alleged uh, killer, uh, innocent though. And uh, you might've known him as that, but uh, he actually rushed for 2000 yards in a 14 game season. So that's actually pretty awesome. So uh, week three, this is when this is when George was like, "All right, we need to let's win a ball game right here." Pop Ivy's getting nervous, you know. He's like, "Dude, you got ten interceptions in two games, man. What's going on?" This is the '60s. Nobody's passing, too. It's, it's got to look like this has to look like a like you have to look at this like um, when you see that ball going in the air that many times, probably deep passes too and stuff. And you're a fan. It's probably like in the movie Semi Pro when they throw the alley oop for the first time and the referee just calls the foul. I bet your referee threw a flag. Like, what is? I don't I don't know what that is. That's a touchdown pass, like 40 yards. You can't do that. We don't, we, I need dust running three yards, cloud of dust, CTE. We don't know what that is yet, but CTE, you know? So Pop Ivy's got to be tripping, dude. 10 picks in two games. George, take care of the football. Okay, George goes, all right, we'll do it your way, Pop. 
Houston beats the shit out of the Chargers. 42 to 17 at San Diego. Three straight road games to start. You go two and one. You're, you're feeling good. 11 for 20 uh, completion. Uh, 11 completions out of 20 attempts. Two touchdowns and a pick. Not bad. Not bad. Jordan took care of the ball. I mean, for his standards, right? Two to one interception ratio. For the rest of these games, you're going to realize how good that is. So, yeah, not bad. You get the win. Two and one. Then you start playing a couple home games. You, you feel okay about that. And next week's a nail biter, though. Houston uh, gets Buffalo again, right? Another another nail biter. Two nail biters against Buffalo this year. Uh, they win seventeen to fourteen. This one is this is. I'm sorry. This, the ball hit the ground a lot in this game from George. He, he was not accurate. I mean, I'm wondering if George like some of these guys. I feel like are hammered, or like George had to work a second shift at the coal mine. You know, what I mean, the night before. I'm saying I worked at the general store the night before. Had a tough night. You know, what I'm saying he's like, coach, I, I had to work a double yesterday, and he's like, well, I need you to play football today, okay, George? Like, I'm sorry, uh, I'm paying you. I'm paying you six thousand dollars for the year. Yeah, sh- surely you you can live off that. Houston wins seventeen to fourteen, but George Blanda eight completions out of twenty seven attempts. Pu, disgusting, disgusting. Makes me sick. Twenty nine percent couldn't even. Cl- Crack twenty or a thirty percent completion percentage, uh, two inter- two touchdowns, three interceptions, only one hundred and eighty two yards in that game. Gross. Get the win though. They get the win. Something tells me George was. I mean, I guess he he had two touchdowns so there, and then you, he kicked a field goal. So funny thing about it, it's such a hustle, man. When you kick when you kick field goals and throw, or, and you know, I mean, play quarterback, you could probably just be like, Coach, I accounted for all the points today. You know, what I mean, he's like, Yeah, thanks, and the points for the other team with the interceptions. Pop Ivy snaps his clipboard over his knee. It's made out of wicker, so it snaps easy. So then the next week, the, the next week, you want to talk about the magnum opus, right? So you follow this. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jumped the gun. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We're on the right page. Okay. So you beat Buffalo, right? Hard fought game. You're three and one. But your coach is going like, George, what is going on? You have two games where you throw 10 picks in the game, in, in between two games. You have an okay game where you take care of the ball. And then you go eight for 27. Well, we won, George, but what is going on? And George is like, shut up. You know, Skip, the, the Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharps of back then are, are talking about you, chatting about you. Can George get it done? You know what I mean? Probably on a radio, like muffled radio, like kids listening to it in the living room, drinking milk and stuff. Like, I don't think George is good, dad. Anyways, this week he answers all the calls. He shuts Skip Bayless up this week, right? 56 to 17, they destroy the New York Titans. Destroy them. George goes 13 for 24 for a nice 54.2% completion percentage. 190 yards, six touchdowns. 190 yards and six touchdowns means those were all like five-yard touchdown passes, but we're not going to hold that against George. Only one interception. Lit it up. Lit it up. He probably did the Kirk Cousins. You like that? In, into the locker room that was like actually an outhouse at the time, probably like in the AFL. You like that? Flies everywhere and shit. They killed it, right? All the talk shows going crazy. All three of them just just going nuts. The guy at the Texaco station is not even helping the customers. He's like, I, well, I'm sorry. Who, what? My George Blanda threw six touchdowns yesterday. I'm still mowing this over. Pump your own gas. Okay. Hell, George Bland is probably working at the gas station, too. So the next week, right? You think this is going to start rolling, right? We're going to start rolling now. Nope. Nope. Get a loss again at Denver, right? Maybe the altitude got to George, but he 46 pass attempts. That's modern day stuff right there. 46 pass attempts. They don't even run the ball on this team. 201 yard, 24 for 46, 52% completion percentage. Only 4.4 yards per, though. Like, that's just – that is, like, dink and dunk, man. They weren't le- – the defense, they actually had to play probably, like, a, a nickel and a dime coverage. They probably – like, nickel and dimes when you have, like, more DBs than linebackers on the field. And you have, like – you probably never played that back then. But they are like, we got to – let's go sign, like, guys off the street, like homeless men, to go play DB. Like, we have to have a DB um, out there. You know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> so Denver had a good game plan against them. Um, they let him complete everything underneath. They didn't let him throw everything over anything over the top. They lose 20 to 10. Then you start to wonder, like, hey, have teams figured out, right? Skip Bayless is on 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 the show the next day going, 
have they figured out George Blanda, right? Have we figured out, you know, they, they bring in the film expert who's really just a guy who doesn't ever watch film. He just watches the game. He's the one guy at the stadium. They're just, he's like, yeah, no, they, they figured it out, All right? And, and for that, you'd be right, right? So after that game, he goes zero touchdowns, zero picks in this 24 for 46 game, right? Like you throw 46 <clears throat> pass attempts, complete 24 of them, don't get a touchdown or an interception. That means you're really like not throwing it down the field. So then the next week is another loss against the, the Dallas Texans, who later became the Kansas City Chiefs. This is the worst game. Worse than the 8 for 27 game, right? Because at least he had two touchdowns and only three picks in that game. So ready for this one? This is just, this is unbelievable football here. Unbelievable football. George Blanda goes eight completions for 18 attempts there. Eight out of 18, 44% completion percentage, 104 yards. That's it. Zero touchdowns. And yes, uh, for the second time this year, six interceptions. Has a six interception game, right? So he's had a six touchdown game and two six interception games at this time. Pop Ivy, Pop Ivy is probably having an aneurysm on the sideline. Something popped, right? Like he's 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 having an aneurysm, foaming at the mouth, swallowing his tongue. Like it's it's bad on the sideline. He's like, I, I don't know how to coach this guy. I called a running play and he just threw it. I don't know. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> Skip Bayless licking his chops. He's lighting him up. The guy at the Texaco station is just dousing himself in this gasoline. He's like, I, are my Oilers for real? Are they frauds? Like I, I bet four, I bet three eggs and a, and a mule that the, that the Oilers were going to win the AFL championship this year. I'm going to be done. I'm not going to have a winter. I'm not going to be able to eat. But we write the ship the next week, right? George has, in my opinion, his most efficient game of the year. They beat the Dallas Texans only 14 to six. It's not, not a lot of fireworks in this game. 13 of 19, right? So 68% completion percentage. Uh, George, two touchdowns, one pick. Uh, Pop Ivy's going, that's my offense right there. That's me. That's me. George Bland is rolling. He's like, dude, I, I left like seven touchdowns on the field, coach. You didn't see it. And he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. He's like, whatever. We'll play your way, right? We'll play your way, coach. So they're feeling good, right? <clears throat> they're feeling good at this time. You have a winning record. And then the streak hits. The, the, the Oilers don't lose another game. I'll spoil it for you. They don't lose another game until the uh, AFL championship. They don't, they don't lose. So going through these, you get uh, they go they play against Oakland. My Raiders, my Raiders, they were in no fly zone against George Blanda. They didn't allow a lot of completions, um, but they got they got killed in other ways. George was kicking field goals on them. Uh, it was ugly. So um, other things happened, but hey, my Raiders, no fly zone. They probably played that dime defense right against them. Uh, maybe that Seattle cover three that didn't exist yet. Uh, Seventeen completions out of forty three attempts for only thirty nine point five. That's right. No fly zone, no completions on my Raiders. Wish they would do that now. Uh, 211 yards, one touchdown, four interceptions. Let's look at that game log. What happened in this game? Because how do you win this game 28 to 20 with four interceptions and completing 38% of your completions, right? So the Raiders take an early league. Bo Robertson um, gets a 36-yard uh, run. Billy Cannon gets another 11-yard run. I'm telling you, Billy Cannon's team MVP. It's not George. Sorry. George turns the ball over too much. Um, then Doby Craig, who I'm pretty sure I, that's no way that's a real person. Um, that's the guy from the gas station, I think. And then, uh, the, they get up 13 to seven. And then, I mean, so yeah, like, I guess what happened was at one point it was 20 to seven in the second half, George decides to just start airing it out, but the, but the Raiders aren't allowing anything over five yards. I think George doesn't take what's in front of him and he keeps throwing into coverage. Um, and then, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, I mean, they actually get an intercept the, uh, the Oilers get an intercept later, uh, intercept the uh, Raider. I don't know who the Raider quarterback was at the time. I don't think it was LaMonica yet, but they, uh, take one back to the house, make it 28 to 20 because for a while, it's just, it's just not interesting. And, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's nuts. So they beat the Raiders 28 to 20. Like what a, what a, how do you win that game? How do you end up winning that game? Just nuts. Um, defense wins championships, I suppose. That's what George is probably saying, All right? They're like, George, what happened in the game? They're asking him, like, it's just a field of just two reporters. Fucking tumbleweed goes by. It's like his press conference, and he's just like, yeah, you know, he's got, like, a cigarette in his mouth, ashes it on the reporter. He's just like, yeah, defense wins championships. They're like, yeah, but you threw a lot of interceptions. He's like, yeah, so did the other guy, you know? Kicked a lot of field goals, too. 
So 28 to 20 over the Raiders on to Boston, right? Because they got beat by Boston. Blanda had a real, real tough game against Boston earlier that, uh, that game, but Houston ends up winning. Blanda goes 16 of 28. Good completion percentage, 57%, but four interceptions to only two touchdowns. George, what is going on in the back of Pop Ivy's mind is like, look, we got two wins. We righted the ship, but man, George is, George is having me going crazy. The doctor says I got to watch my sodium levels. I'm going to have a heart attack. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just, he ate nothing but like sardines and like salt pork. That's why his sodium levels were so high. It's all you had back then. People don't realize. And then, um, so you go after that, you got three wins in a row, right? That's when you, you, you got the ship riding. You're, you're starting to think about the playoffs at this point. Playoffs, playoffs. You're starting to think about that. Houston plays San Diego. They win a very close game. Uh, George Blanda, not a good game in this game as well. Uh, but it looks like they ran the ball well in this game because there were not a lot of pass attempts. Blanda in this 33 to 27 win over San Diego, five completions, only five completions out of 18 attempts. PU disgusting 27.8% completion his lowest completion percentage of the year. Uh, 76 yards rough when you only get double digit yards rough, but you get the win. Um, and I'm sure there was some good defense. I'm sure Blanda was kicking his ass off. Dude. That's probably why he could, when you're a quarterback and a kicker at the same time, you have that ace in the hole. You're like, dude, my bad. My it's tough to kick and throw past it. Like I lost my strength from kicking. Like, you know, he, he could do that. Like you could have the excuse. But yeah. Five of 18. Hey, look, it was ugly. Two picks. I mean, he threw only had five completions and two interceptions. Like that's wild. That's wild. There were out of George Blanda's passes, seven of them were caught and only five by his team. Like, and, and he got the win. So the next week, they're riding high. The guy at the Texaco station feels better. He feels better about betting all that, you know, half his farm on that. Uh, and he's just, he's like, all right, man, I, oh, we got this. We got this. Like, uh, George, is, George is making me nervous as hell, but that's okay. So the next week, George airs it out, man. Fuck this five for 18 bullshit. George says, you know what? Probably goes out there with a lip or a skull in there, uh, just chewing it, spitting it on the field, going, you know what? We're going to play today. 34 to 17 just destroys the Broncos 21 out of 44, only a 47% completion percentage, but has 280 yards, right? Earlier in the season in the loss, he has 386 yards against Boston where he's just, he's just doing YOLO balls, just throwing it all over the place, but 280 yards in this one this is the most he's had in a win, right? In this, in this year, it's the most he will have in a win uh, of this year. It's, and this is down the home stretch. So that's encouraging. Now the discouraging part, three touchdowns, five interceptions he's had two six touchdown or six interception games and a five interception game and two four interception games he's had one six touchdown game but wow that's that's just just not a lot that's just not a not that's not enough right that's not enough so but 34 to 17 you're rolling right team's clicking on all cylinders you, you could argue bland is the bad cylinder <laughs> You could argue that, right? I mean, this is like Taysom Hill playing. Like, you know what I mean? Right now, this is like, if you let Taysom Hill have this many passing attempts, I bet you he has this type of season. He has like one game where it just all works, right? Where it just clicks, you know, broken clock being right twice a game. And, uh, okay, so Oakland, uh, they play Oakland again the next week. This is the last two games of the season. They win 32 to 17. 11 completions for 33 attempts. It's only 33% completion. Really bad. Really bad. One touchdown, two picks. Now that part's not even bad for George. Like he's he's usually way worse than that. They get the win 32 to 17. Those numbers, the way those numbers look, that's a lot of field goals to me. That's a lot, a lot of field goals. Uh, maybe some missed extra points, but not my George Blanda. He'd never miss an extra point. So now, last game of the year of the regular season. 44 to 10 win over the Jets. And then Blanda was 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 going off this game three touchdowns to three picks but he was 15 of 32 um he was good 225 yards good in that game um you're ready for the playoffs right i'm ready for the playoffs so that's the regular season right that's the regular season um i i love it i think the ups and downs right you you have within a two-week span you have a six touchdown game and a six interception game you have later in the year you have in a span of four weeks, you have eight, 
you have 15 interceptions in a four week span down the home stretch where you win every single game. I mean, this defense was incredible. I don't, I don't care what the 85 bears did, dude, this defense, this defense won in spite of this. And I, I love that. So the final line of the year for George Bland, 197 completion percent, uh, completions to 418 attempts. 47.1 completion percentage, 2,800 yards, 2,800, 2,810. I'll give him, give him the extra 10. Come on, Glenn. Average 6.7 yards per completion, 27 touchdowns, 42 interceptions on the year. Longest touchdown of the year was a 78 yarder. That must have been electric. I think they even played on grass like half the games. I bet you half the games were like mud with like, you know, like I said, like nails. And then, you know what I mean? You wait, you just pull a nail out of your head. You look like Frankenstein when you get up after a tackle. Just crazy. 51.3 quarterback rating. Unbelievable. All right. So, unfortunately, these 1962 Houston Texans, it, uh, it, it didn't work. They, play, they played in the AFL championship. They lose in double overtime to the Dallas Texans. And look at these games that the Dallas Texans and the Oilers had that year. They were great. I mean, but. George Blanda had a six interception game against Dallas, but he also had, you know, only a one interception game against them on, a, on another one. But, you know, I, I don't, George just didn't get it done. He did not get it done. Um, I'm going to see if they have the box score for that championship game, just so we can see. <clears throat> I, guess I have a feeling George threw a couple picks in this one. I have a feeling he did. Uh, yeah, Len Dawson. Oh, oh, this is too good. This is too good. This is such, such a good thing to end on. George Blanda. In the AFL championship game, 23 for 46, 261 yards, one touchdown, five interceptions. He, could, he couldn't help himself. Couldn't help it. Just couldn't help it. Oh, my gosh. Live by the Blanda, die by the Blanda. Dude, he, it's unbelievable. I, I just had to share that with you guys. It's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, would it, would a three point shooter ever get this kind of like that kind of volume ever? No, like no one gives you that. The thing is, is guys now don't get that attempt. They don't get the attempts anymore. You will never see a quarterback do this. Even a tanking team has to switch it up every once in a while, just to, just to appease the media, appease the fan base. You know, just people are talking. There's more eyes on you now. You could not put George Blanda out there for those numbers, even with that defense. <clears throat> Like Jimmy G, Niner fans were calling for Jimmy G on that. Like they weren't even really super into him when they went to the Super Bowl with that great defense. It just wouldn't have happened. You know, I, 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 it boggles my mind, boggles my mind. And also, like I said, if you bench George Blanda, he'll hold out from you as a kicker. He's like, look, I'm like I said, it's a package deal. If you can't handle me at my six interceptions, you don't deserve me at my six touchdowns, sir. Right. If you can't handle me at my six touchdown or six uh, interceptions with zero touchdowns, you don't deserve me at my one interception with six touchdowns. And I'm not kicking any field goals for you. So you're going to have to find two guys to replace me. And the coach is like, two guys. I had to pay you 6,000. That might cost me 8,000 to get two guys. I guess we're stuck with George guys. So like I said, George ended up kicking field goals for pretty much the rest of his career after he, uh, after his time with the Oilers. Um, NFL legend. I mean, you play, you play 26 years in the NFL. I know not all of it was physical, but I, I have a feeling even kickers got hit back then. And, and yeah, that's my favorite season of all of, uh, of my favorite nugget of NFL stuff. Like it's kind of hipstery, right? I try to pick the thing nobody knows about uh, stuff that got forgotten, but man, that's it. My name, my name is Glenn Rockney. Um, if you like this, subscribe to the channel. Some football, some sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's other stuff. Sometimes we talk about COVID. Sometimes we talk about lab leaks. Uh, sometimes we talk about politics. Sometimes we talk about food. Um, sometimes we just talk about fun stuff. Uh, we're going to be doing, uh, with my co-host Crypto Side, we're going to be doing a Beatles live stream uh, probably next Thursday um, on the 1st. That'll be a good one. Um, but again, subscribe, like. Uh, I want to do some more of these. Send me, if you like this, send me some funny seasons like this. I'll break them down. I'll try to do like a narrative to them too. Uh, I think it's very fun. So uh, maybe I'll bring some guests on for that. Don't know what to call this show. Um, whatever. It's just George Blanda, man. George Blanda, the YOLO quarterback. 
All right, guys, that's it. Follow me on Twitter at Glenn Rockney. This is at Rare Candy Pod One on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you guys.